<laughs> that sounds awesome. That's a Toyota sound. These trucks are legendary. And this is actually my first time driving a truck like this, um, but I've heard many, many stories about it. And uh, it is the truck of, it is the truck of extremist terrorist groups. Okay, we're ready? All right, great. So my name is Patrick Shea. Uh, I'm from Hubbardston, Mass. Uh, my dad, Bill, and I uh, are car fanatics. Um, I would say um, but my dad influenced me uh, quite a bit in the beginning. Um, I think I more influence him now, to be honest. <laughs> a lot of people, um, you know, really, really like the movie. I don't think a lot of people say it's their favorite movie. It's my favorite movie. There's no question about it. Most of what you see here is because of me. Uh, Back to the Future, I can remember on July 3rd, 1985, Friday night, I saw it opening night. I just graduated high school. Uh, I was 18 years old. I remember vividly seeing the DeLorean coming off of Doc's van for the first time. I remember vividly seeing that black Toyota on the back of the ramp truck for the first time. And I, like many people, fell in love with that truck. I mean, when Marty said, check out that 4x4, I mean, that was, that was it back then. That was what everybody wanted was that truck, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Back to the Future is one of the biggest stories ever told by Hollywood. And the truth is, a lot of the vehicles from those movies are gone. The truck from the first movie, gone, crushed. This is the only remaining pickup truck that Marty loved in existence. After part one had finished filming, uh, the truck was given away, the one from part one, uh, in a contest. And from what I understand, it was totaled. Uh, so uh, needless to say, they needed to get another truck. They contacted a guy named Keith O'Brien, who uh, owned a movie car studio. Uh, so they uh, rented it from him, modified it to look just like the one that they used in part one. From there, they used it in both parts two and part three. In the summer of 2012, um, the guys from Time Machine Restoration um, had posted uh, that they actually located Marty's truck and they were going to restore it. At that point, they were in the middle of restoring the A Hero DeLorean. They weren't ready to take on another restoration to the caliber that they needed to do to do this truck. They decided they were going to sell it and uh, decided they would call us. Uh, we could be like the, the part three guys, uh, having uh, lots of props from part three. Fortunately, the truck's condition um, was such that it, was, it spent its entire life in Southern California, with the exception of a trip to Mexico back and forth a few times. This could in fact be a daily driver if you wanted it to be. And it was someone's daily driver. For a little while, it was orange with a blue interior, and it was a daily driver. And then it was a Mexican daily driver for drugs. The truck had uh, been uh, stolen and ended up in Mexico. What are the chances that you're going to have a vehicle stolen, <clears throat> it's going to end up in Mexico, part of a drug cartel, and you're going to get it back? Well, it must be meant to be because he actually got the truck back. This is the typical mascot truck for extremist groups in the Middle East and uh, apparently drug runners in Mexico. And when they stole this thing, they knew exactly what they were doing. They wanted a truck that goes anywhere and can stand up to anything. No matter what happens to it, you can always bring it back and can build it back up. 
So we decided it's a custom 4x4, let's give it a custom engine and a custom exhaust system and you know, make it a real diamond, make it perfect, make it the best one on the planet. These trucks are hard to find parts for. Mechanically, no problem at all, but uh, cosmetically, parts aren't available. We actually relied on many of our friends and fans uh, to help us locate some of the harder to find parts. Uh, it was a collaborative effort to get to where it's at now. When the Shays approached Greg Ward to, to restore this truck, his efforts put his company on the map. He has become the go-to professional in Toyota truck restoration. It's great to see someone who, has, who takes his passion to the extreme and shares it with other people so that we can enjoy this truck. I wanted to work with my dad since I was out of high school. Actually, the business that I was working for, I was running a tire shop, and uh, they had actually um, uh, not renewed the lease for the building that I was working at. And uh, on a Friday afternoon in August of 2008, they came and said, by the way, <laughs> we're closing the shop. So here I am at that point, 41 years old, going, okay, and now what do I do? Well, uh, it's uh, one door closes, another one opens. That's when I went to work with my dad. We've grown very close um, over the past say eight nine years um, because I went to work with him so um, uh, I'm very very fortunate and I realize how fortunate I am every day when I come to this place I won't say that it isn't without a bump here and there uh, but um, I understand and I listen so uh, as long as I keep doing that we'll get along just fine <laughs> uh, my father um, as good as a businessman he is, uh, he's that much worse a mechanic. Anything that has to do with the cars, I, I do. Uh, so that, uh, uh, combined with the ability to be able to do that with the, with the vehicles that we have, I, I realize, and I mentioned before how fortunate I feel like I am, uh, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I guess a lot of people say, you know, the DeLorean is, is really obvious, and it is. It is the iconic vehicle from the uh, trilogy. But the truck is just as important. You really got to think about, uh, you know, that was Marty's truck. It was the truck that you know, they're going to throw a couple of sleeping bags into it and go up to the lake. Someday, Jennifer. Someday. Uh, I really feel that uh, we are tremendously lucky, and we're a caretaker. You know, uh, this truck could have faded into obscurity um, if it wasn't for that Craigslist ad. You know, it could have gone into you know, oblivion. It's an absolute dream come true. It's an honor and a privilege to own such an iconic uh, uh, piece of movie history. father-son relationship and partnership between Bill and Patrick is just, it's heartwarming. And you know that with two people like that, no harm will ever come to these vehicles, except for maybe when I'm in the driver's seat. The Shays, they own not only this truck, but they have a Back to the Future 3 DeLorean, screen used, and it is the only DeLorean in private hands and you'll see that next week.